Hey everyone, welcome back to the library. It's Tabletop Tuesday today, so we're going to get into one of my favorite subjects to cover, Dungeons and Dragons. D&D is a wildly popular tabletop RPG, often boasting to be the world's greatest role-playing game. Today it is in its fifth edition and supports a massive player base of somewhere around 13.7 million people. With around 30 books in fifth edition and growing, D&D retains its title through conventions, social media, online, and at-home gaming groups all over the world. But how did it all get started? To answer that question, we have to go back to the late 1960s in Lake Geneva, Wisconsin. In 1967, Gary Gygax founded a group of wargaming enthusiasts called the International Federation of Wargaming, IFW, which aimed to share wargaming ideas and amateur game designs. A year later, Gary hosted the first Gen Con at the Horticultural Hall of his hometown, Lake Geneva. It was during the second Gen Con in 1969 that Gary met Dave Arneson, who was developing what some historians considered to be the first fantasy role-playing game, and would later use a medieval war game rule set that Gary developed called Chainmail to add a deeper layer of rules to it. He called his game Blackmore. They would become friends and co-founded the Castle and Crusade Society, which was an offshoot of the IFW that focused on medieval wargaming. During this time, they developed Dungeons & Dragons using predecessors like Blackmoor and Chainmail. In 1973, Gygax partnered with Don Kay and formed Tactical Studies Rules, which would become TSR Hobbies, Inc. TSR published the first edition of Dungeons & Dragons in 1974. It was a three-booklet set that came in a wood-grain colored cardboard box. In 11 months, the entire 1,000-copy print run sold out. D&D would grow quickly in popularity throughout the 1970s, with 9,000 copies being sold by the small independent publisher by 1977. At this point, the game had expanded to include new classes, adventures, and rule sets, so it was time to take D&D to the next level. Advanced Dungeons & Dragons came out, publishing the Monster Manual first in 1977, then the Player's Handbook in 78, and the Dungeon Master's Guide in 1979. By 1980, around 250,000 units of Dungeons & Dragons products were sold prior to the beginning of the year. By summer, sales of the basic set alone reached 12,000 copies per month. This kind of growth was met through expansions as TSR opened up a UK branch of its company. Throughout the 80s and early 90s, D&D's popularity would spread like wildfire, even stirring up some of its own controversies, such as what is called the Satanic Panic when a combination of well-meaning parents with misinformation fueled by media and news stories of cult-inspired murders and a general mistrust of anything new and different propagated a belief that Dungeons & Dragons was tied to satanic cult practices and rites. Despite the opposition from popular media, D&D continued to grow even through the legal battles and hurdles they had to endure at this time. A second edition of AD&D would release in 1989 bringing revisions and clarifications to the game's rules, as well as new settings and player options. There is a darker side to D&D's history as well, but I feel like I should pause to mention. Dave Arneson would work at TSR for only 11 months in the early days. After a massive fallout over how the company was being handled, many of the founders of TSR would leave the company. About this time, when D&D began its climb to cultural phenomenon, Arneson's name was dropped from the credits. This happened at the time Advanced Dungeons & Dragons was released. TSR claimed that it was a totally separate entity from Dungeons & Dragons, and therefore they did not have to pay Arneson royalties. As you might guess, this did not sit well with Arneson. This led to a pair of lawsuits in 1979 and 1985, with Arneson and TSR coming to a settlement out of court. There's much more to this story, and if you're interested in following up on it, I suggest checking out the documentary Secrets of Blackmoor. In 1997, after explosive growth, TSR was purchased by Wizards of the Coast, the company behind Magic the Gathering. WOTC would continue the legacy of D&D, and in 2000 would release the third edition of D&D, adding new mechanics that modern players might recognize, such as skills and skill checks. The third edition would get a 3.5 revision in 2003, and it would reign as the dominant system until 2008, when fourth edition would release. Fun fact, this is where yours truly began his D&D career. In 2014, 5th edition was released and is going strong today. And there you have it, a very brief history of the world's greatest role-playing game. I focused more on TSR side of the history in this video, and less so on the Wizards of the Coast side. But if you're interested in more details, the main D&D website has an article called History, 40 Years of Adventure, by John Peterson, 
that serves as a good timeline of the game's growth from the early days to the beginning of 5e. For more details on Dave Arneson's story, check out Kotaku's article, Dungeons and Deceptions, the first D&D players pushed back on the legend of Gary Gygax by Cecilia D'Anastasio. I used both during my research for this video, and they were engaging and informative, but with far more information than I could squeeze into a four or five minute video, so check them out. That's all for today's Tabletop Tuesday. I hope you enjoyed a look at how D&D got to where it is today, and that you'll check out more of its fabled and tur even turbulent history. There's much more to explore, and even the topics I covered here were barely so. Thanks again for watching everyone, we'll see you next time.